hated me. A stripper plans her revenge on men. I felt like I had the upper hand now. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. For today's top stories, let's go over to the CBN News Desk. Today is the last day for lawmakers in Washington to prevent a government shutdown. The weekend brought no compromises on a funding bill. Instead, Republicans took a new step to delay Obamacare, while Democrats and the president refused to negotiate. It's a battle to see who will budge first. Your hate for this president is coming before the love of the this country. The has because if you love this country, you would not be closing it down. We're fighting for the American people. Without some kind of deal, a partial government shutdown takes effect at midnight. Over the weekend, the halls of both the House and Senate were dark. No negotiations, no emergency meetings. The demands of each party are clear, but neither is willing to compromise. The polls are overwhelming that people all across this country want to see this law delayed. They recognize it's not ready for prime time. The wheels are falling off. Even the administration this week was issuing the delay of the small business enrollment online. They've, they delayed the employer mandate. And now we need them to take action to delay this bill you know for a not. year. It is wrong to do a shutdown of government as the lever to make a uh, change. If the clock runs out, close to 800,000 federal workers will be told to stay home. Government services will slow down and some government offices will close. The next move in the budget standoff belongs to the Senate. They're expected to reject the latest House plan and the House is already promising to deny any short-term spending bill passed by the Senate. It's not clear if the House will eventually back off its efforts to slow Obamacare to keep the government running. This law is a train wreck. It's been described as such by its author in the Senate. And we can't move forward with it. We can't simply allow this train wreck to happen. If the government shuts down, it will be the first time in nearly two decades. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived in the United States Sunday with a warning for President Obama. He's trying to convince the world that Iran still threatens the survival of Israel and the West. Chris Mitchell has the story from Jerusalem. On the eve of his U.S. visit, Netanyahu delivered a sobering message. I will tell you the truth in the face of the sweet talk and the onslaught of smiles. One must talk facts and one must tell the truth. Netanyahu referred to the charm offensive by Iranian President Rouhani. Rouhani is assuring Western media and diplomats that Iran's nuclear program poses no threat to the West. Netanyahu may face opposition from the Obama administration following last week's bombshell announcement. President Obama said he called Rouhani. The call marked the first time a U.S. president has talked with an Iranian president in more than three decades. Here in Israel, many analysts still see Iran as an existential threat. They're skeptical about Rouhani's charm offensive and leery about the Obama administration's decision to deal directly with Iran. They believe it could be more deception than diplomacy. We prefer diplomacy. The problem is that the way the Iranians are actually behaving. Destruction of Israel is only the first phase to confront the Western civilization. And when the Iranian leadership speaks about Western civilization, they mean Christianity. Iranian expert Menashe Amir says Iran's ideology hasn't changed. According to the Iranian belief, Christianity is based on Judaism. So first they want to destroy the is Israel, which is the symbol of Judaism, and then to confront the Christianity. That's a fact that uh, uh, people in the Western countries either don't know or they ignore it. If Rouhani is using charm to delay the West, while well, Iran gets closer to a nuclear weapons capability, it puts Israel in an even more dangerous situation. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Torrential rains and howling winds battered the Pacific Northwest this weekend. Storms swept across most of Washington State and Portland, bringing record-breaking rainfall. Some areas got a month's worth of rain in just two days, making it the region's wettest September on record. Streets have become rivers and fallen trees blocked streets and sidewalks. 
Winds up to 70 miles per hour ripped down power lines, leaving thousands in the dark. One ministry has traveled across the country to provide hot meals to victims of this month's unprecedented flooding in Colorado. About 18,000 families were displaced by the flooding that destroyed thousands of homes. The Virginia-based Mercy Chefs Ministry traveled all the way to Colorado, partnering with local churches to feed victims and first responders. Just to be here, just to serve these people, just to give them just a little bit of hope, just a, a meal that would would help them to know that there's somebody out there that cares, somebody that wants to, to serve them. You know, the, this is all about spreading the, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ through the power of a shared meal. That's what we do. Mercy Chefs has partnered, prepared several thousand meals for the Colorado flooding victims. We'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Please stay with us. Grace, music is unpredictable. I know I have what it takes. The Dove Foundation raves. Grace Unplugged is remarkable and inspiring. This is not about the music. It's about everything else that goes with it. Dad, were you watching me? A moving and meaningful film. This book? His words shook me. It was like my whole world. That parents and teens should see together says focus on the family. What are you going to do? You're going to drag her back home? Yeah, I might. I think maybe you're fighting God. Just stop running. Grace Unplugged, way to PG, starts Friday. Jim is 38, mortgage, married, three great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. Jim can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $19 a month. His secret? Select quote. Select quote is impartial. They'll comparison shop the pick of insurance companies like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. Jim's wife, Deidre, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote. We shop. You save children, each of them precious, each of them a gift, each of them unique. All of them are a work in progress, a story being written, a sculpture taking form. That's where Superbook comes in by providing a strong spiritual foundation for the children you love. This month, Esther, for such a time as this. Haman has written a decree that all the Jews in the kingdom are to be killed. Always be prepared to stand up for what's right. Haman is a very powerful man. But the king is more powerful, right? I cannot even go to visit him unless I am called. Join the Superbook DVD Club and get Superbook's newest episode, Esther, for such a time as this, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. You and your father's house will perish. What Haman has done is wrong. I will go in to see the king. Get Superbook yes. and watch the miracles happen. Scott Baum was 12 years old when he lost his virginity to a neighbor who was 19. And this woman then consumed Scott's life for the next seven years. And his loss for her nearly ruined him. In our main bathroom, you know, here there was this, this monthly calendar. It was a Playboy calendar. And so using the bathroom daily, I'm seeing the girl of the month. Scott Baum was only eight years old when he was exposed to pornography. As I grew older, uh, I sensed a more um, physical desire uh, for uh, a woman. And as time went on, that urge became stronger and stronger. So at the age of 12, Scott found himself in a relationship with a 19-year-old neighbor. We drank together and smoked a pot together. And before long, she was trying to uh, invite me to give up my virginity. Uh, but yet eventually that took place. And um, little did I know that I had given away something that I would have rather have not of. Uh, biggest regret of my life. He was crushed when he found out his girlfriend cheated on him. It was such a scar, such a, a deep wound in me emotionally. And at 12 years old, I think that's a very impressionable age. 
Scott's drug and alcohol abuse continued throughout high school, along with his relationship with the older woman. And instead of dating high school girls my age, uh, I'm still in the struggle, not able to break free from this addiction that she was uh, fulfilling. After he graduated, Scott sold pot until he realized he could make more money selling cocaine. He went to Venezuela to find a source. His business grew quickly. I sold it somewhat pure, if you will, and there again, I stole the market. People said, wow, <laughs> this is the guy to go see. It's the right price, the right product. <clears throat> and from there, it just escalated. Scott became a big-time cocaine dealer with stashes worth more than $25,000. My God had to be money because with it, I had the girl. I was constantly um, trying to hold on to this relationship. And eventually, uh, after seven years, uh, even married her and just so I wouldn't lose her. And that marriage lasted for about 90 days. And that's when uh, it caught her with uh, a guy across the street. Scott needed someone to talk to, so he called his mom. A few years earlier, she had become a Christian. My mom was praying for me, and she was going to some Bible study, and she saw you know, great things happening between her and my father. And so I called her one day and said, Mom, I'm miserable, you know? Things aren't working out. And she said, well, Scott, your problem is, you know, your God is, is money. Scott married a second time, this time to a woman he didn't know well. She was drinking heavily, doing so much of the cocaine that she would give my friends money so they would buy the cocaine from me, leave it outside her house so she could grab it and have her own stash. Her behavior was erratic and dangerous, and we're trying to keep things calm in a home where I have a floor safe full of cocaine or cash or both, and it was getting out of control. Then Scott's wife took all the money from the floor safe and left him. And immediately what my mom said came to my mind. Your God is money. And I said out loud, my God was just defeated. The same day Scott's second wife left him, he sat down to watch TV. Flipped through some channels and stops at a man dressed up nice, teaching you how to pray to receive Christ. And I remember him saying, you have no peace, you have no joy. Let him transform. Who is your God? You want everlasting life? Say this prayer. Pray with I was all ears. Jesus, I wrote God notes. I turn off the program. I'm in the house by myself. What do I have to lose? And I thought, well, if I say the prayer and nothing happens, life goes on. But if it's true, I'll have joy, peace, and eternal life. I said the prayer. And I called my mom and I said, Mom, uh, I think I got saved and I need to go to church. My mother told me of a church that she went to and walked in through a back door, not realizing it was the back door of a Sunday school class. And they said, oh, come on in. And I sat there sweating, not dressed appropriately. Uh, someone looked and said, is that Don Johnson? And uh, I said, no, my name is Scott Baum. And they said, oh, wait a minute. Do you have a mother named Beverly? And I said, yes. They said, we've been praying for you for three years. Aren't you in some illegal business? And right there, I had this belief and this faith that God had orchestrated all this. And from there, I had that joy and that peace. So here I was, um, I prepared my heart to protect it and to not give it away again unless prompted to by God, by the Holy Spirit. Scott got out of the drug business immediately and worked as a purchasing agent for an electronics company. Scott married Luann in 2004 and they have two children. I think Scott has seen the grace of God and through that he, you can see grace in his life. He has a, a true desire to seek God and to seek God's kingdom. Scott's father also noticed the difference in his son's life and soon he too became a Christian. How powerful is that, that the prayers of just a few would go so far in orchestrating everything for me to find that way and be and enable the Lord to come into my life and be set free from the lies and deception and the idols in my life. 
So thanks for those grandmothers. If you have a grandmother praying for you, a mother praying for you, um, beware. <laughs> Don't fight it. Don't reject it. Enjoy the joy and peace that awaits you. Don't fight it. Don't reject it. Why, why would you reject it? You can have love. You can have joy. You can have peace. You can have eternal life. What's not to like about that? You can have the same things God has. You know, maybe you've got a grandmother praying for you. Maybe you don't. But you can still have it. Because the great news is that Jesus is praying for you. The Bible says that he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he ever lives to give intercession. That means prayer for you. And he's doing it right now. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, that's all you have to do, open the door, I'll come in. He wants to prove himself to you. He wants to prove himself strong to let you know that he loves you, that he died for you, and that he wants you to be with him for all eternity. Now, maybe you're like Scott and you think money's a good thing or more than a good thing. You, you've elevated it above everything. You think if you've got money, you'll, you'll have whatever it takes. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's a relationship you're trying to cling to and you can never find it. Well, Jesus challenges you. Bible does. And it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And all you have to do to do that is ask for it. And it's a very simple prayer. Jesus, if you're there, if this is real, if you really can be my Savior, if you can really come into my life, if you can really change me, then here I am. Come in. All you have to do is pray that and ask him to forgive you. So often we carry around so much guilt and shame. We start thinking in our hearts that God doesn't want anything to do with me. You know, we've gotten to the point where we, we just can't imagine that God would still love you. Well, the good news is he does. And the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It says, this is love, while we were yet sinners. So try it. See. Don't change the channel. Don't turn away. Let today be the day where you find out he's real, he's God, and he's able to do it for you. Pray with me. Jesus. That's right. Say it out loud. Jesus. I come to you today. And I want forgiveness. I want to be set free. I want to know peace and love and joy and happiness again. So Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart, to set me free, and to be my Savior. And Jesus, I want you to forgive me I want to know right now how much you love me. And if you'll do this, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, for those who just pray, I ask for a baptism in your love. I ask that you fill them to overflowing with your spirit. Let them know the righteousness, peace, and joy that comes only from you. Do it now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that if you'll just confess with your mouth, if you'll just let somebody else know what you've done, you shall be saved. So call us. Number's toll free, one 800 7590700. When you call, I've got something for you. It's free. It's a packet of what you do now. It's called a new day. In there's a CD teaching, how to live the Christian life. What do you do? 
There's also a booklet filled with Bible verses. We encourage you to get a copy of the Bible. If you don't have one, we've got one available for you free online on CBN.com. There's also a lot of discipleship material there where you get to know the foundations of the faith. All of that comes when you just log on. Uh, it's on CBN.com. It's on the homepage. There's a link uh, to the materials that are available. But make that phone call. Number's free, 1-800-759-0700. Terry, over to you. Well, coming up later, a stripper makes the leap from prostitution to porn. And I saw the check that was written out to one of the girls there. And I said, that's what you got for doing that? Where do I sign up? See what else she signs up for after we come back. I love being outdoors, working with my hands to make this place look great. We mow, we trim, and maintain over 130 acres. There's always a lot of work to be done here. One day, while I was working out here, I met my wife. Who knew? God's beauty surrounds CBN's campus. What better way to be a servant than to work outdoors with your hands? My name's Nathan Walker. I'm a groundskeeper, and I work at CBN. thinking about one thing, the money and your selfish means and what you want. And, uh, and when you're at that place, you're in a dangerous place. When I should have been killed in the streets, you didn't allow that to happen. He showed me mercy, even when I didn't deserve it. Oh, when I realized how much God loved me, that compelled me to love him back. It compelled me to love him back. Imagine the indescribable joy of winning $7,000 a week for life. That's right, now you can win $7,000 every week for the rest of your life. With the new Set for Life prize from Publishers Clearinghouse. $7,000 a week, week after week, for life. Watch your mail or go to pch.com and enter. November 26th, you could win $7,000 a week for life. It felt like nothing at first, but then it started getting worse and worse. In like a week, it started to hurt. I saw a pretty bad infection, so I kind of got upset and, and really scared. She thought I would, if I wouldn't do something about it, it would eat my toe off, literally. I record the 700 Club every day, so I was watching it, and I heard Terry say, There's someone, um, a parent, you're praying for a child named Timothy. God has heard your prayer, and the thing you've asked for will be done. And it was just such a personal word of knowledge. I just got really emotional. I thought that it would get healed in a couple of days, and I was really happy. But it turned out it got healed in a couple of hours, actually. I did see a change right away. I felt really good because I could run with Mom on the jogging trails, and I could do all the stuff that I wanted to do before. Growing up, Danielle Williams never trusted men, and she had good reason. From a young age, she was abused by them. So by the time she became a teenager, Danielle devised a plan to hurt them back. I started to hate men at this time because every time I was hurt, it came from a man. Danielle Williams believed she had good reason to hate men. It began when a daycare provider's son repeatedly molested her starting at eight years old. He instilled that fear. If you tell, this is what's gonna happen to you. And he would hit me, he would physically abuse me. I was scared of him, and then I was like, well, if I tell, maybe I'll get in trouble. So I didn't say anything. She lived with her father after her parents divorced, and she watched him routinely beat every girlfriend he had. He eventually turned that rage onto Danielle, adding him to the list of men she hated. He picked me up by my throat, and he lifted me up, and he threw me down to the floor. He beat me so much that I passed out. Danielle's father went to jail for child abuse, and she went to live with her mother in Los Angeles. There, a man in the neighborhood began to invite young Danielle over to his house. She loved the attention from him until the day he raped her. I knew that I hated men even more, even more. 
Cause now I'm 12 years old and I had already been molested at eight. My dad tried to kill me when I was 10. And now this man who I trusted just raped me. I hated, I hated men. But years later, Danielle's attitude towards men softened. When she was a teenager, she fell in love for the first time and thought he was in love too. So this older man is telling me everything that I wanted to hear and more. I just wanted to just be his. After the first time she slept with him, the man told her he was a pimp and wanted her to be his prostitute. Danielle was devastated and refused. Then she discovered she was pregnant with his child. Every time I get with a guy, something bad is happening. I, I'm done. Then you tell me I'm pregnant. I'm 13, I'm in the eighth grade. What am I gonna do with a baby? And the baby's father is a 27 year old pimp. Danielle delivered prematurely and the baby died within hours. It was over. As far as me caring about life, me caring about myself, me caring about men. Oh, men was out the question. I, I was done. I hate, oh, my rage. It, it was a rage that I had for men, the, the sight of, of men made me sick. A friend convinced her she could manipulate and control men by stripping. She started dancing in nightclubs and prostitution quickly followed. She pushed away any thought that what she was doing was wrong. Even though she had been raised in a church, she had no moral convictions. I didn't care. I knew who God was. I knew that what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't care. I hated men and I thought this was a way to repay them. That's how I looked at it. I'm getting them back for them hurting me. And I felt like I had the upper hand now because before you guys had the upper hand and you were hurting me. Now the roles have switched and that's how I looked at it. One day, Danielle was invited uh, onto the set of a porn film in Hollywood. And I saw the check that was written out to one of the girls there. And I said, that's what you got for doing that? Where do I sign up? Because I was making a lot of money as a dancer and as an escort already, you know? But with the porn, I looked at it, that would be an even better way for me to make even more money. And I said, okay, let's go for it. After so long, it became normal. It became cool that I was a porn star. Danielle continued as a call girl as well, and one night she accepted a client who turned out to be a psychopath who wanted to kill her. Open the door! And for three weeks, that man came in there and he raped me and he beat me and he told me over and over again, I'm gonna kill you. You're not leaving here. And I believed it. I knew that I was supposed to die. And every day, I got weaker and weaker and weaker to the point where I just gave up. I collapsed to the floor and I wept and I wept and I wept. But I laid there and I cried so much that I, I couldn't speak. And I got my words together and I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll change my life for you. Don't let me die like that. Not like this, 19 years old. He had to get me to that point to show me that I'm God, I'm still God. It's me and you. And at that very moment, I got my salvation. Danielle prayed to accept Jesus Christ. A few days later, a man overheard her crying and helped her escape. She immediately severed her relationships with anyone in the sex industry and started going to church. Surrounded by new friends, Danielle's life began to change. I was starting to fall in love with Christ. And the more I did that, the more he started to purge me and deliver me and heal me. The more I reached out to him, the more he worked in me. Everything that I didn't have, the relationship with my mother, the relationship with my father, the hurt from men, he filled every void. Danielle is now in ministry full-time, sharing the love of Jesus Christ. There's no sin too big or too bad for Christ. And when everyone else leaves you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm a living witness, a walking example of what Christ can do in somebody's life. You know, God created us to have relationship with him, relationship with each other. When the most personal relationships in our lives are messed up, 
it can mess up how we see God. And what it really does is alienate us from wanting to have a relationship. Relationships are hurtful when we've been hurt. That's how we associate them. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then all you have is head knowledge about him. Maybe you went to church. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Maybe you've heard about him. Maybe you know somebody else who's, who's a believer, who believes that Jesus is Lord and has allowed him into their lives. But it needs to be you. You don't come in on the coattails of your grandparents or your parents or your friends or anyone else. The invitation is to you. What I find so interesting about Danielle's story is she learned to keep God out here, the same place that she kept everybody else so she couldn't be hurt. But then in that moment of desperation and need, she called out to him. Lord, she said, if you'll save me. You know what the answer is to that question? If you're calling that out today, God is saying, yes, I will save you. The Bible says that when one of his sheep is lost, he leaves the 99 to go after the one. His heart is that every one would come into relationship with him. That's what we were created for. You know, when we live in this world, there's always the enemy of God who's wanting to rob us of our identity, wanting to rob us of who we are and what God created us for. Wanting to tell us that we're no good, that nobody's worth trusting, nobody's going to love us. You know, after a while, we start living like animals. But Jesus comes to set the captive free. That's what he said. He said that's why he came. And he said he came so that we could have life and have it abundantly, not just be alive, but to live fully, wholly with purpose, in relationship, with meaning, knowing him, loving him, letting him love us, being forgiven by him, starting fresh, empowered by his spirit. Does that sound good to you today? I don't know what you've gone through in life, but I know one thing. We all need to find the answer in him. He offers us forgiveness from the past. There's nothing you can do that can separate you from the love of God apart from your own unwillingness to come into that relationship. It's so simple. You see, God wants you to love him the same way he loves you, so he doesn't force himself on you. He doesn't push into your life. He doesn't demand that you do it. He waits. That's what the Bible says. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and have fellowship with him. Open the door today. Pray with me. Say, yes, God, I'm trusting you. In spite of all that's been done to me and all I've done, I'm trusting you to be who you say you are. Pray with me right now. God, I need you. I want to know you, Jesus. I want that relationship that your word says I was created to have with you. I am so messed up. I've made so many wrong choices. I've allowed my life to be shaped and defined by other people, and I am sick. I'm fed up with the whole thing, and I'm just coming to you today, bowing down before you humbly, saying, Jesus, be the Savior of my soul. Jesus, I give you everything that I am and all that I have. I am so sorry for the things I've done that have hurt your heart that have gone against your ways. I, I know I need you. I'm not sure how to change. I, I'm asking you to help me. Be the Lord of my life. Teach me your ways. Open my heart and my mind to you. I want you to come into my life and give me a new beginning. I want to live for you, with you, in you, you in me. I give it all to you today. Teach me how to be yours, Lord, so that I can serve you so that I can know you the way you want to be known. I welcome you into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've just prayed that prayer, how do you grow in your relationship with God? Well, we've put together a packet just for you. It's called A New Day. It's 
got some teaching in it from the Word of God, and it's going to tell you how do you, how do you move forward now. This is free, by the way. So is the number to, to receive it. It's 1-800-759-0700. If you'll call that number, say, I just prayed that prayer, and I'd like that new day packet. We will get this out to you right away. All absolutely free for you. Gordon? Well, still ahead, a small lump grows into stage four cancer. He said to me, Mr. Fournier, I don't know if you know, but you have days to live. I'd be thinking, what, what's this gonna be like? Because I realized I was dying. The treatment that became a miracle later on today's 700 Club. I had chased the record deal for years with no results. And then I let it go and I turned it over to him and then there it is. I want people to know that you can't be bad enough for God to not love you or forgive you or to give you a second chance. He doesn't give you the right to judge you, so stop there and learn to love you the way He loves you. And then you can enjoy life more than you've ever enjoyed it before. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible. Available at cbn.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. If you're living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, here is some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. So small, it fits right on the bottle of strips. It only takes a speck of blood and it gives me my results in five seconds. I can even test it on my own. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. And if you call now, we'll also send you this stylish, full-featured meter at no charge. That's two free meters. You can keep one in your pocket and leave the other one at home. You can even hook it up to your computer so your doctor can track your results. United States Medical Supply also delivers prescription medication right to my door so I don't have to go to the drugstore anymore. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Call today. Welcome back to the 700 Club. President Obama has personally requested Pastor Saeed Abedini's swift release from an Iranian prison. Abedini was imprisoned for his Christian faith over a year ago. Obama mentioned Abedini during his historic phone call to Iran's president on Friday. Abedini's wife says Obama's request is an answer to prayer. The president also mentioned two other Americans held in Iran, Robert Levinson and Amir Hekmati. Super Kids Club is reaching children throughout Cambodia with the gospel. The CBN program airs on national televisions each Sunday and is now in its 12th season. Each month, CBN staff responds to a thousand letters from children who are impacted by the show. Many pray to receive Jesus Christ personally. One young boy's letter said, quote, God changed my life and blessed me with love and joy. Thank you, CBN, for telling me about God through the Super Kids Club program. And you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by logging on to CBN.com slash international. Gordon and Terry will be back right after this. Grace, music is unpredictable. I know I have what it takes. The Dove Foundation raves. Grace Unplugged is remarkable and inspiring. This is not about the music. It's about everything else that goes with it. Dad, were you watching me? A moving and meaningful film. This book? His words shook me. It was like my whole world. That parents and teens should see together says focus on the family. What are you going to do? You're going to drag her back home? Yeah, I might. I think maybe you're fighting God. Just stop running. Grace Unplugged, way to PG, starts Friday. Stop. Living with hair loss, that is. Losing your hair is no fun, and no one wants to be bald, but there is hope. Getting my hair back was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm happy with the way I look now. 
I'm very excited about my hair. I feel beautiful. I love my hair. Hair Club offers all proven hair loss solutions backed by our commitment to satisfaction guarantee. If you're not 100% satisfied with the solution you choose, Hair Club will apply the purchase price to another proven hair loss solution or transplant more hair at no charge. That was the best thing I've ever done. It looks good on me. Call in the next five minutes to get your free brochure at no obligation. It will tell you everything you need to know about your hair loss problem, and it's free if you call now. I am more pleased than what I had even imagined. I at least look, I would say, five years younger. I'm 52, and I look better now than I did when I was in my 40s. I feel great. And that's not all. The first 100 people who call will also receive $250 off any hair loss solution from Hair Club. Call now. I really wanted to help women, and I knew going back to school would be the best way to just even achieve those goals. Regent University just offered me the opportunity to be able to go to school online to get a degree in a secular discipline of psychology with a Christian basis and be able to take care of my daughter. Well, as an Army veteran, Tony Rose spent his life serving his country. But when he retired, Tony realized that it would take more than just his military pension to pay the bills. After Tony Rose retired from the Army, he and his wife Bev moved to Kentucky. He started a successful counseling practice, but even with his military retirement, their finances weren't what they had expected. I was doing okay as a therapist uh, with the income that was coming in but I wasn't really realizing what I thought we should be earning at that point in our life. Tony and Bev are Christians, but tithing was not a big priority. It was not really a commitment. It was like something that you ought to do. They started watching the 700 Club and learned the biblical principle of reciprocity, which says, give and it shall be given unto you. And taking a look at it from a logical point of view, seeing that, you know, if God promised this, it will happen. And, and how I could invest or what I could do, you know, in faith, trusting God, that he would take that little bit and make it more or make it what we needed. We prayed and made the decision to, to give more. They started tithing and almost immediately, Tony noticed a change in their finances. Simultaneously, it seems that the pay doubled when we decided to start tithing. They give to CBN Monthly through Pledge Express. CBN seems to just be so widespread in helping so many people. I can't go to all the world and be a missionary, but CBN can because they're out there. And if I can't go, then I sure can help support those that do go. And that's what CBN does. The Lord has promised that He will take care of our needs. He didn't say, I'll make you a millionaire. He might someday. But He said He would take care of our needs. It would suffice for what we needed every day. And Beverly and I have come to trust that. And when we have needed something, it's been there. My God will supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. That you can bank on. But you have to live life in accordance with His principles. And one of the things He loves, and the Bible is very clear, God loves a cheerful giver. And so if you just resolve, I'm going to live a life of cheerfully giving, then you can count on the other promises coming uh, to you. If you want to get on the plus side of giving, if you want to be a part of preaching the gospel around the world, um, that's something else God's asked us to do. If you want to be a part of helping people, doing good to others, being a, an answer for their need, do it by joining the 700 Club. A portion of every gift goes into the work of CBN International to preach the gospel around the world, not in English, but in the indigenous languages of the world. We have 15 production centers, all designed to train local Christians how to preach the gospel in their own language to their own culture. And we're seeing incredible results. Um, tens of millions of people come to know Jesus Christ as a result of our broadcast every year. Another portion goes in the work of Operation Blessing to bring help and hope to people around the world. If you want to be a part of it, just join the 700 Club. How much is that? $20 a month, 65 cents a day, and you join tens of thousands of people that want to make a difference in the world today. So call us and say, yes, I want to join. 1-800-759-0700. When you call, ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. The bank does all the work. 
no checks to make out and mail in. Uh, we save so much on the processing, we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call. Do it now. 1-800-759-0700. Tara? Well, up next, see how a man was healed of stage four melanoma. Plus, we're going to be praying for you and your needs, so stay with us. Hi, this is Pat Robertson. This is an important time in the history of America. It's an important time in the history of CBN. And what you do is so very important now. But we've got to get the gospel out here in America. We've got to help the poor and the needy, feed those who are hungry, clothe those who are naked, bring medical attention to those who are suffering, and more than anything, bring hope to those who are without hope throughout the world. So your 700 Club membership makes a huge difference. And I ask you to go to your phone and call. If you haven't already called in, we appreciate what you've done so much. So don't slack. We don't want our hands to be empty. We want to say, Lord, here are those who have come to you because of my labors. Telephones are available, toll-free line, and we just thank God for each one of you. So don't hesitate to call and do it now. It's just sad. It's sad that in a matter of minutes, people can trash you and your business on the internet and get away with it. Did you know nine out of 10 customers do an internet search before they buy? So when a former employee unfairly attacked you online or an unhappy customer put you in a ripoff report, there was nothing you could do about it but watch your customers leave and your reputation suffer. Until now. Reputation.com gives you the power to protect yourself online. The internet can spin your life and job out of control, but Reputation.com watches over you online and improves your reputation by promoting the truth. Reputation.com protects everything you've worked so hard for, doing the things you just can't do yourself. Call now and get a free, detailed analysis of your online presence. Our Reputation Advisors will show you where the danger is and how much you have to risk. Call 1-800-791-4911 for your free reputation review. That's 800-791-4911. Call now. 20 spread throughout Joe Fournier's body. Doctors thought the end was near. Joe did too, but not his wife because she was holding on to a promise. Joe Fournier had always been an active, healthy man. I was always so healthy. Anytime I had anything physically wrong with me, I pretty much ignored it because I thought, you know, I'm going to just tough it through this. In 2002, while vacationing with his wife, Terry, Joe noticed a lump under his arm. I thought, well, you know, I've had other lumps, little cysts on my body, and, and it's probably nothing. And I thought, well, just just ignore it at first and, and see what happens. He was really tired. And he told me about this, but I just thought, okay, you just need to go to the doctor. By the time they came home, the lump had grown. Joe visited their family doctor. He said, well, whatever it is, it's not cancer. And he said that at two different appointments. And so that, that kind of really put me at ease. He thought it was a cyst and, and he thought maybe it was uh, an infection or something. So he gave me antibiotics and tried different things to try to, to calm it down or make it go away. The lump kept growing and his doctor finally sent Joe for a sonogram. The tech said, this is not a cyst, these are lymph nodes. At that time, it was probably getting close to golf ball size. Eventually, I went in to get the biopsy, and the, the surgeon said that it, the, um, the cancer was two baseball sizes by the time he took one of them away for the biopsy. Joe had stage four metastatic melanoma. The aggressive cancer was spreading throughout his body. Once they took everything out from underneath my arm, it spread to my stomach. And uh, so they had to take a third of my stomach out um, and, they, and they took some lymph nodes out and part of my omentum. Doctors sent Joe to Pittsburgh where he received high doses of interleukin-2, a very potent form of chemotherapy. It is an immune system booster and uh, it, it was like brutal. It turned out that didn't work and uh, it only grew even more. Eventually, the cancer invaded his kidneys, lungs, and pancreas. 
the doctor told Joe it was only a matter of time before he would lose his battle. And he said to me, Mr. Fournier, I don't know if you know, but you have days to live. There was times when, uh, like kinda late at night, I'd be laying in the hospital and um, I'd be thinking, you know, in the, in the dark, um, and kind of a dark night of the soul, you know. What, what's this gonna be like? Because I realized I was dying. But Terry believed that God would heal Joe. I was really fearful, and that is when I feel like the Lord gave me a promise. Abide in me, and if, you, if I abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and you will get it. And that is when I felt the Lord was telling me that he was going to be okay. They met oncologist Dr. Barry Levinson. He told them about an experimental treatment that combined chemo with immunotherapy. It was a long shot at best, but they were out of options. It was a highly toxic regimen, and again, I was concerned about his ability to tolerate it. He was quite ill at the time, very weak, had lost a lot of weight. I certainly uh, was anxious to get him started on therapy, but also faced it with some trepidation because uh, treatments are very, very difficult to tolerate. Despite the dangers, Joe agreed to the treatments. Meanwhile, their church prayed, believing that God would have the final word. Why is, does everyone say, thy will be done? And not the rest of that verse, you know, which is in heaven. So I've started thinking, what's in heaven? Is melanoma in heaven? Is sickness in heaven? Is, um, there's all good things in heaven. So I started just asking for heaven to come to earth. And I think that we started getting bolder. After the first round, I could feel um, I had two masses, one above and one below my collarbone. I could feel those shrink and, and go away. And after the second round, I had some internal shrinkage from a scan I had. They said, you've had significant shrinkage on the inside. And then after the third round of the chemo, it was totally gone. I had a PET scan and they said, there's no cancer. You are cancer free. He told me that what happened to me doesn't happen. And he, he has never seen it happen. That's the moment I knew. I, in the moment I wanted the nurses and the doctors to say, this is a miracle and that this has not happened before. I've found that patients who are patients who have great faith uh, tend to do better than predicted. We can't always predetermine who will respond well and who won't. So that's something beyond our control. And then ultimately, you know, God is the ultimate healer and uh, we put our, our trust in his hands. For eight years, Joe has been cancer free. He is back to enjoying life, knowing that each day is a gift from God. This cancer was way bigger than me, uh, but I found that with God on my side, it, that, that changes everything. It's a game changer having him. And, uh, and he just showed me how weak I was apart from him, but how strong I can be in him. For me, I think cancer was one of those calls on our marriage that um, I took all expectation off of Joe and put all my expectation on God. And I feel like the love of Christ came out of me. There is indeed nothing impossible with God. If he chooses to heal, he can do it in a, in a flash. And I think that has helped me just to trust him, trust his goodness, trust his power and his ability. love what Joe said. When God's involved, it's a game changer. It's a game changer for all of us. I want to share this with you. This is, we want to pray for you in a moment, but just to encourage your faith. 18-year-old Ashley lives in St. Paul, Minnesota. She began having horrible pain in her right leg last June, almost a year ago. On a scale of 1 to 10, she described her pain as a 15. Her doctor diagnosed the condition as sciatica. Chiropractic treatments did nothing to ease her pain. Then last December, while Ashley was watching this program, she was praying, let this be the day I'm healed. About that time, she heard Gordon giving this word of knowledge. Someone else with sciatica shooting pains down the right leg, God is healing you. In Jesus' name, be restored. Ashley said she felt a weird sensation in her right leg and the excruciating pain went away. Now she's looking forward to her June graduation and a pain-free college career. Wow. Praise Thank God for Ashley. Here's one. This is a, a double miracle. Palma from Derby, Connecticut. 
began having trouble swallowing. X-rays showed a bone spur in her Ooh. neck. And then a CAT scan revealed a nodule on her right thyroid lobe. Her doctor wanted a biopsy to check for something serious, but she missed the appointment. Well, she was watching the 700 Club. Terry, you had a word of knowledge. Your throat closes up. You have a hard time swallowing. Touch your throat right now and receive healing from the Lord. And then I had a word about someone with a woman, uh, about a woman diagnosed with a bone spur. Well, she touched her throat, claimed the words for herself, and when she had her next ultrasound, the specialist was puzzled. <laughs> Everything came up negative. There was nothing to biopsy. She's had no more trouble with her throat. Now, one of the things you heard in that piece was, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And here was a wife puzzled. Why do we always pray God's will, but we're not praying thy will in heaven. And in heaven, there's no melanoma and there's no cancer. And so we started getting bold in our prayers and say, okay, let's, let's pray that God's will would be done on earth as it's being done in heaven. That is a key to miracles. And then she got another key. She said, I, I didn't want anything from Joe anymore. I wasn't looking to Joe. I was looking to God. And Jesus says that very clearly in Matthew chapter 11. Have faith in God. Don't have faith in your faith. Don't have faith in your prayer. Don't have faith in your method. Have faith in God and let him do it. And then you get it. Then that you get that outpouring of love. You get the outpouring of faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So if this is for you in an act of faith, lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing. Just like Ashley say, this is the day that I'll get healed. Let's pray. Lord, we lift the needs of the audience to you right now. And Lord, we're stirred to boldness that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in heaven, there is no lack. There is no disease. And so in Jesus name, we pray your will would be done in these bodies. Now, as people are laying hands, let them be healed in Jesus name. There's someone with problems in your right um, knee and God is just healing that he's restoring cartilage. What the doctor said can't be done is being done now in Jesus name. Someone with kidney disease and you're looking at a transplant, God is able to heal. Even if it's dead, he is able to heal it. In Jesus' name, be restored now. Terry? There's someone else. You have multiple lacerations. I have no idea why you have them, but you're concerned about infection and scarring from that. God is going to completely heal that for you without any issues. Uh, someone with um, uh, spinal cord irritation and swelling, it's going down. You're being healed now. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been touched by God, we want to share in your good report. So call us and let us know. We always rejoice. And if you need someone to agree with you, call us as well. We leave you with these words from John. Ask and, your, and you will receive that your joy may be full. God bless you. We'll see you again. Daddy. Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Come on, Give me go. that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Ah, sure, life is busy, but I found a way to make a huge difference in people's lives. I guess you could say I'm changing the world right here from home. I bring medical supplies and doctors to people in need. And dig wells so that villagers can have clean and safe water to drink. I make it possible to preach the gospel in over a hundred countries, including right here in America. And when disaster strikes, I'm there providing food thank you, and emergency supplies to give people hope again. Every day, CBN and I are making the world a better place. Here you go. My life is hectic, so I joined CBN through Pledge Express.
My bank does all the work, and I know that my gift is being used where it's needed most. So become a CBM partner and join Pledge Express, because you can do a world of good right from where you are. Hi, good morning. Are you ready to get started?